Hi, my name is Rick, and I think you can see me okay. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do an unboxing of a bicycle that I have no idea whether or not it's been out for a while or whatever, but it's a bike by Macto, and a lot of the uh, reviews and things seem to mix up the Macto. Uh, this is a um, semi mountain bike versus their more city, the cityscape which they make. So when I look at reviews, it seems to think that there are like 850 reviews. This bike has a basket and all those things, and it doesn't. Um, I did order it, which we'll see if it's a good price or not, because we'll find out what the build is and things like that. But um, um, so that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to unbox and do a review of this bicycle. I've not seen a single review on it, which makes me think it's either not been out for a long time, or it is such a bad bicycle that nobody does a review on it. So that's what I'm going to be doing today, unboxing, putting it together. Um, do that and then probably do a separate uh, video on what I think of the ride and build quality and things. Okay, so that's what today uh, we're doing today. Again, this is called the City Runner. Um, it is from Macto. Um, um, we're checking, I mean, the boxing of it is. It looks to be in good shape from everything that I can see. Um, there's nice foam around the edges. I don't see any big holes in the side of the box. Um, I see fenders and things that are on there. I'm gonna start pulling some foam and things out. Um, I'm gonna need, obviously, um, I guess I'm gonna take, remove the whole thing and take it out. Not sure if you can see me in here, but it looks like a pretty decent uh, job of putting it together. Again, I don't see any damage to the inside that we will not know until uh, we put it together. So I'm going to pull it out. Let's see if I need to do anything special on here. It's not that heavy. That's the price of that. So I got that out. Um, nice protector there. 26 inch wheels, which I would have liked it if this was at a 27.5 or 700 C, but I don't think you're going to find that for a um, $500 e-bike. Uh, it does have... <laughs> Would you call that a fender? A bikini fender, maybe. So that's there. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this box aside. And they say to keep the bike for at least two weeks to make sure that you don't want to return it or anything like that. So I can start putting things in the trash in the box just for you know, but so as I look at it right now it seems like it's in pretty decent shape I don't see anything busted up on it I do see the accessory box which I'm going to snip off here in a moment I'm get a for that. again this company is an acto and they've been making they've been making bikes for a pretty long time um, you can see that oops there's some damage here. We'll see what's going on there. Some metal pedals that look okay. Looks like the toolbox and stuff that I'll need, so. Uh, let's see. Let me just go ahead and continue to take things off. That's like really horrible in terms of what they consider fenders. Yikes. Should be okay. Whoa. Uh, looks like it has the instruction manual right here. I'm going to wave that. Uh, decent wide handlebar. Um, I've been looking at some uh, fixie or what seem like fixie e bikes, which have a, a carbon belt drive, and they all seem to have really small, um, sh uh, short, or narrow bars. Um, I like Narrow bars are okay, but I think if you're trying to get a more comfortable ride, user's manual, let's see. Oh, look, there is a more specific city runner. Holy cow, some color. That's Oshi, by the way. My cat named after uh, TJ Oshi of the Washington Capitals. Wow. So the first manual was not really meant 
I don't think for any part of this. This has really clear instructions, pictures, warranty card. Definitely will fill that out. It seems to me like if you have a problem or something's broken, you take a picture of it and they'll send you one. And if you need something uh, fixed at a bike shop, you have them repair it. And I think you can send them the bill. I think that's the way that that works. So really good instructions. Uh, one of the things I know right off the bat with this is a very strange thing is when you you remove the battery to, power, to turn the power button off and on. The upside of that is you can have it off, power off the battery, put it back in the um, bicycle frame, and then uh, if you don't have the key to unlock the battery, you cannot turn it on. So it becomes just a useless, a heavy 40 pound um, e-bike, a regular bike. All right, I'm gonna continue taking this part. I definitely want to open up the accessory box because it has the tools and things. I'd like to see. The seat looks like it looks pretty decent. Um, I'm amazed at what people think is a comfortable seat for cycling. As I've seen very wide seats, I've seen seats where you just with all your energy is put into trying to overcome the thickness or the cushiness of a saddle. Uh, they're definitely the happy medium. They're probably a little, I've been successful with having seats that do not have a lot of cushioning and I don't seem to get many saddle sores, but maybe that's because I don't ride enough. Um, yes. So continuing, I'm gonna fast forward this part. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. It's a nice looking saddle. It almost feels like gel. It's got a nice comfy slot there. It does say gel. Woo, gel seat. Okay, that's nice. It is the old fashioned mount here, but I think it'll get the job done. Okay, on to the accessory box. Now, I'm pretty impressed that they are metal pedals. Um, who knows, maybe it's meant to save weight. For, I mean, uh, there's added weight for that, but if I look at the pedals, probably not a name brand, not a logo or anything like that. Worse. Young Hua 18X. Okay, so there's that. I do have the toolkit, which is right here. And I can only hope that this video is showing it because I'm on the wide angle, using the wide angle of my iPhone, which would not be if I had it turned so I could see what I was doing. Huh. Real. Actual open box and wrenches. So this is what I'm given to put the whole thing together. There definitely is a parts uh, list. It's in the nice manual part of that. So on the box, let's see what's in the rest of the stuff in the accessory box. So my guess is there should be keys in here. Oh, this is a charger. That's all that is. Okay. Charger with instructions, not that heavy. Um, the range on this bicycle is supposedly like 18 to 30 miles. So if you decided you wanted to use this as a uh, commuter or something like that, this is not a whole lot in the backpack. So I think um, you can extend your range by charging your device at, um, when you're at work or school or whatever you're commuting. Um, this is a pretty standard I've, of the e-bikes I have. I probably need to check wattage or voltage or whatever, and this probably would work uh, in a couple of my other e-bikes. So you plug this in here. I probably should, when I, when I have a chance to remove the battery, to charge the battery as I'm building the rest of it. So hopefully we'll do that in a bit. Okay, what I see so far is pretty decent. So let's see, let's continue taking it apart. Um, 
All right. Uh, let's see. So the bike, the front tire is apart. Now I'm no longer connected. You know, overall, I'm not finding a single thing. It's early in the process, it looks damaged. They wrap the handlebar pretty well. Um, quick adjust seat. Um, really not, not bad. Um, so if I look at the I guess the handlebars are a little bit tight or narrow, but I've seen tighter. Uh, amazing that the grips are um, locked on either end. They have a firm, but I think it's pretty good over time. Um, all right, so I'm gonna set this down. Oh, there are the keys, right there. And the keys are meant to unlock the battery from the frame, and then you have to take that off in order to um, turn the power off or on the battery. Um, once you, if you have the battery left on, you don't have to, um, you don't need the key for anything else. Okay, so that's interesting. So the, oof. so whether that was done on purpose, the battery was not locked into the frame, which probably is a good thing, but I need to check, which means there, you know, if there weren't any issues it was powered on. Here's the place where you charge it. So you lock it into the bike, and if you once you lock, if it's off and you lock it in the bike, then you can't turn the power on unless you unlock the thing, take the battery out, uh, which is a bit of a pain. So I'm going to pause right now, and I'm going to charge this battery. So I'll be back. In a moment. This is the only one. Uh, when you are chopping and things like that or cutting, you want to make sure you're not cutting any cables. Hmm. Does this go this way or does it go this? Oh, it has to go this way. So that's where the controller is. Oh, there, there is. It is internal cabling. Very neat. Um, what I might do here, so I'm going to cut down a little more and then I might put it up on the bike rack so you can see more of the action. Um, again, I'm, I'm impressed with the quality of the components. Yes, it's just uh, V-brakes and not disc brakes as you find on many, um, as you'll find on many um, e-bikes. This bike is not super powerful, so I think the notion of disc brakes is not necessary, but Crits are also a lot more maintenance free until you need to do maintenance on them, in which case, um, if you're not versed with that, then it can be a problem. Uh, I'm impressed that it does come with a skewer up front, quick release. Uh, they really protected this puppy. I kind of like that. Um, they did a real nice job of making sure that that end was protected. It's so nice to have a big box you can just throw stuff over your head and it goes in the box 20% of the time. Um, okay, so let me take a look. Any branding on this? Oh my gosh! They're Kenda Quests! That's not, that is not horrible. 26 by 1.25. It is a brand name. It's brand name. So let me get the um, skewer on the right way. What's the direction? Direction. So the direction is this way. This goes on. I'm a big, uh, I believe that putting the Quick release lever on the left hand side seems to be the universal way to do it. Um, I don't know if it makes a big difference or not. There seems to be some questions about 
if you have disc brakes, that might mess up your disc brakes, but I don't get how that could happen. So, all right, so why is this here? Okay, we got this, gonna push this through, push this through just to get it on going. So I don't, you know, I probably could put that on right now. All right, so it's pretty funny looking at 26 inch tires in that aren't mountain bike tires that are just uh, road tires. Um, I could give a whole lot of cush, cushion or suspension, but I didn't expect that. Um, okay, so a little more, I'm gonna turn this around so I can take the rest of this stuff off. Again, what I see so far, I'm impressed about. Um, no, no damage, I mean, the most damage I did was the orange bike stand on the black thing there. Just came off. If I'm not mistaken, these are 160 millimeter crank length, uh, which is smaller than uh, the norm. Okay, we are getting close. Let's see what, I should have put a couple of clock, see what time I started on this. Uh, I know that the, uh, it's an LCD or an LED display that just has red and green lights that tell you level of charge. It doesn't, oh, that's the light. Could be worse. Could be better. This feels like closer towards like the cheap uh, lights versus like the high intensity ones. But I think the fact that it even has one for this price is pretty amazing. Right, continuing, Macdo across the front. Let's see, which way is it? So that's the right way. It's funny, I've seen some videos of people who, uh, the reason why I think forks are turned in the way they are when you unpackage them is to make them as compact as possible. And I've seen some bike builds where they have to come back later and say that they messed up because the fork was the wrong way. And, learning. Again, this is my first build. So I'll say excuse me for any of the errors that I make. But again, there are no reviews on this bike. And from everything that I can see, it seemed to be a pretty decent price from a company that we know about. It seems to get uh, decent reviews for being a low price uh, budget e-bike. All right. So I'm going to need some of the tools. Let's see if I'm going to put the fork on first because that's a lot of that's a lot of cables and stuff that I'm going to stretch if I don't. So, um, yeah, am I doing this without instructions? Yep. Is that what I do? Yep. Um, that was ew. that was very tight, and I could hear some. <laughs> I can hear some metal bending, and I'm hoping it's just this top plate here. <laughs> um, it is threadless. Again, I'm, I'm impressed with the fact that this is threadless. Um, it has three spacers. It has protected, uh, protected bearings. Um, pretty cool so far. Okay, now, this is when you make sure when you put your... Handle bars on correctly. So you can it up. Oh. I just removed all three spacers. Okay, so it is really important to make sure that when I do this, <laughs> I don't. Why won't you? Okay, there you go. No that all of this feels like it's in the right place and not mixed up. So I think I've got it. I think I've got everything that I need here. Hopefully this is loose enough for this to go down. Shocking. That's pretty nice. I probably could remove, I could remove one spacer and it would fit nicely on here, but we're gonna do this, 
do this. I am liking what I'm seeing so far, I gotta say. Um, get this on top so I can screw this in. I'm sure there is a manual or something that says the order of this, whether or not you crank this down first or you tighten the things. Maybe it's a little bit of both. So um, it feels a little, I'm assuming you can see everything I'm doing. Yet. Um, I'm not going to do the whole the video camera with my hand because I end up missing stuff and better do things with two hands. And oh, goodness gracious, it's an adjustable um, height uh, stem. I think because this is a sh feels like a short, um, you know, it's a. Sh uh, I think it's pretty tight, uh, but I think it's nice to have the length on this um, stem because I think I might feel a little tight otherwise. I am five foot six, so that might be some a good basis for you to when you see me get on. It's like that's there's no way I could fit on that. Again, this is a um, Macro City Runner. Oddly, um, it's hard to find. <laughs> If you look, I'm, I don't even know how I, well, I know how I found it. I uh, spent a lot of time in bed because of a hip injury, and I just am looking at bike bargains, either on Craigslist or um, other things. And uh, this popped up as probably one of the least expensive e-bikes uh, with something that was full-sized. You definitely can find foldables, uh, like 8-inch, 10-inch e-bikes out there for $400 um, and uh, they actually some uh, I've had a couple that I think were I was rather amazed by the um, Jupiter Discoveries I had the uh, the 16 inch wheel version I, I'm really surprised how good that was um, so much so that when I sold it I wanted to buy the, the next size up I almost feel like that could have been a real uh, uh, a usable thing. Oh my goodness gracious. I think I am ready to put this on the stand to start working on it. Um, I may, so what I might do is put the um, wheel on and then put it up on the rack. Uh, so I'm not even sure if you can see me doing that from where I am. But I know I've got to take this puppy off. Oh, that was really hard. So Again, um, nice that this is not crushed. I saw a video the other day where it was uh, the person saw, you could see that there was a little notch in here for another bike. And when they tried to get the wheel on, it wouldn't go because the fork was pushed together. Um, not so in this case. So I think it's gonna go on fine. Uh, let's see, I need to remove this quick release thing. Again, currently I'm very impressed with what I see. Uh, it's rain. It's gonna rain today, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this outside for a ride today. Um, but we are going to get at least as far as getting Oof. goodness gracious, that was pretty easy. There is a very there's a pretty funny thing in here in terms of the um nope, let me put that kickstand up. Comes with a massive kickstand, and the kickstand does not impede the. Uh, it does, when you uh, back up the pedals, it doesn't ride on those, so they put it in the right place. And e-bikes, e-bikes need uh, kickstands because they are super heavy, and you don't want to damage the derailleur or other things. So one of the weird things about this is the forks, uh, the the holders are slanted out like that. So that might be the one first thing that I noticed that is really, really, <laughs> that might be the one thing that's gonna be problematic here. So let's see, we'll loosen that up a little bit and then see, oh, what the heck was that sound? Yeah, so I am not confident about that. I can, there's a bend that I'm gonna to have to deal with here in a bit. 
but so I got that in. The clanging of the, uh, <laughs> the light that I've not put on yet. But let's see how well when I put the reconnect the cable, I'll let that go. Pull this back. How horrible is it? Hmm, they need something, but not, not too horrible. All right, so here you go, and what you can see who this bike is sized for. I don't think it's sized. For me, it is, it is, you know, it's actually sized for me. I feel embarrassed when I do a step over on a bicycle and I, my 29 inch inseam is in good shape. Like, I think this is a kid's bike, but this actually is probably the right size for me because I don't, uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and put on the seat post. Yeah, nutty. I should be greasing this. And they, there's no way they grease it. Let me come back and do that later on, but right now, that's all I wanna do. Uh, it's nice that it's got a quick uh, release, or quick adjust um, lever. Oop, not enough. Okay, pretty good. Wow. So, all right, my next thing is, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna put it up on the racks so uh, you get a more straight shot and you can see what it is that I'm doing. But um, as I look around and everything that's on here, I think the construction is good. This is definitely made for someone who is five foot to five foot eight tops. Like I think this is the upper limit. I am the upper limit of this and I am only five foot six. Um, but let's see, incredibly light. All right, so I am going to pause and the next time you see me, I'm gonna have it up on the bike rack. So I'm gonna take a look right now to see if I notice anything at all in terms of damage. It definitely, you can feel the paint job, you can feel where the paint, uh, the black or it's black or blue. Sadly, I think it is a Dallas Cowboy colored bicycle and I am a Washington Commander fan. Um, but that's uh, neither here nor there. Uh, I need to take, pop this puppy off. Nice protector on the derailleur. Derailleur is probably the nicest turny, is it TZ, T, whatever, uh, derailleur I've seen. It's got this fun little red thing that makes it seem like it's high end. It's only six gears, um, but with an e-bike, it's not quite that big a deal. Runs really nicely. I'm gonna put, I need to put the pedals on. Wow. And then we're going to get, we're going to get these useless fenders on and see what happens after that. Um, oop. It does have, so let's see. Okay. It does not have, for you to put a bike rack on here, you've got, down here you have it but you have nothing here to put um, no mounts. Interesting. Oh no, on the front, you've got this, but nothing up here. So you'd have to get those little uh, bands type and nothing stuff like that. So uh, overall, interesting. Let's get the pedals on. I actually to watch the video uh, the other day because it's like I I don't want to be sitting taking off and putting on pedals for a bike that I was also working on and realizing I'm going completely the wrong way. But if I have it right, the way that you do pedals is off is um, if you make sure you have the right R and L, so you're putting on there. But off means you're taking the wrench and you're going that way towards the back. And the way that I think about it, if you're moving forward and you want to get, get going, then you go forward and it's the top part of the crank. So that's the way that I feel about that. Let's see. 
So I've got that right. So I need the right side. That's the left. I need the right first. Oh. Not bad. Okay. So this is the right side. We've got an R. And so I should be able to rotate that going forward. And I've got it right. Again, am I supposed to be greasing that? Heck yeah. And I have gotten into trouble from people who I've purchased bikes from where they did not uh, grease that. And I have to take it to a bike shop for someone that knows the physics and how to put the right um, pressure to be able to remove a, what I believe, what I find to be a stuck pedal that they can take off because they've done it a million times. No, that's not horrible. So again, not a name brand. Let's see, is there a name brand on here? Yunghua 18X. But I mean, it feels pretty darn good. I'm gonna go on the other side here. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. And again, so on this side, when you put it on, you rotate forward because you want to get going. So let's see if that's right. Woohoo! Feels good. Oh, but this is I've got this thing that's the uh, bike. Yeah. So. So in terms of what I the last thing that I really need to do with this is I. I could leave the stem height where it is and just adjust that later on. That's not a necessity, but I think in order for me to feel any comfort or feel like it has any possibility of being a bike that I would consider keeping, then I want to make sure that I'm upright and uh, comfortable on it. Okay, pedals on. That's nice. I don't see any pinches in the thing. That turns nicely. I'm sure the brakes need some adjusting. Um, pull. Ooh, look at that. Where's the hub motor? It's on the other side. Look at that beefy thing. There's nothing on this side in terms of where the power needs to go through. It's on this. Wow. That's interesting. So the, hmm. So the power cable goes on the inside of the, of the um, chain and uh, seat stay. Normally, what happens is that the, bat the, the cable that powers the um, rear hub goes on the outside and goes through the nut here. And so this, this is very easy to take off, which I don't ever want to take off. I've never taken a rear tire off of a, re a rear hub uh, bicycle. Again, what I see is impressive so far. Uh, tire uh, Pedals are on. So the next thing is going to, <laughs> so I've got to mount these. You know what? I think I'm going to keep the ding. I'm going to keep the fenders off. Let me see how, how much do I care about this? So, oh goodness gracious, there's nothing to this. You. <laughs> Let's see. You just stick this in here <laughs> and you tighten. <laughs> you know, they're worse things. And that probably takes care of the thing you're working on is making sure if it's, it's wet that when the, nothing's going to hit you, well, I guess stuff can hit you from here but it's what comes back off and over here that can hit you. So if this is catching that, <laughs> those are funny fenders. All right, so why not put the fenders on? It's not a big deal. So here, I see what's going on. So next thing are, okay. So I've got to take, I have the screwdriver. All right, so this is when
Yeah, these fenders are too easy not to put on. Let's do this thing. I take these brakes off so it's easy. Uh, is on there? Yep, that makes sense. Okay. So, I'm going to put the, put the light on first. I can push this up here. Oh, okay. So you do have to pull this off completely. This is not that hard. Probably would be nice if there was a bolt there. Okay, that's done. <laughs> it's extremely difficult. No! I knew that was gonna happen. You know, when you watch bike videos, I guess part of it is to not take so much time in post production that you end up having. Um, Lots of gaffs and slips. Like, if I did this right, I would take out the part where the fender fell on the ground, but eh, you can see how easy this is. It's just a matter of getting it on there. There are hard, easier, harder things to do in this life. This was not hard to do at all. on and then all you need to do with this to get this is you need to bend it so it's you know what why not why the heck not so wrench in here I can tighten this puppy down crap out of that. <clears throat> Oops, no stripping. Okay. okay, so this needs to be turned back a little bit. Okay, this needs to be, that's actually pretty straight. Hmm. This needs to come down a little bit so. This is loose, so I need to tighten this. Nice. Okay, let's try to put the brake back on. Let's see if there's a clearance issue with that. It does not appear to be. Okay. A little nutty. We are almost there. There's, there's nothing else to do except for to adjust the brakes. In fact, I'm going to put air in the tires. Uh, my pump here is just straight standard. I always get Preston and Schrader mixed up. Uh, let's see what the tire pressure is asking for this so I don't blow the things up. This asks for... I can't believe these are Kenda Quests. It is a name brand... I'm sure not great quality. 40 to 65 PSI. All right. 65 CSI. Okay. 
Presta. I'm gonna call it say what these are. Came with 13 pounds. It doesn't really need to be inflated. Okay, so I'm going to have a 50 pounds. Fifty. So fifty pounds should give some um, comfort because there's absolutely no suspension on here at all. There's a suspension seat post. So if you were to put full 65 pounds on here, you would you're going to feel it anyway. But I'm going to. 50 pounds is going to give you a little bit of uh, um, shock absorption, but not a whole lot. Put in the comments whether or not I always feel like I want to put less in the rear so I get more suspension <laughs> and more up front. I'm sure there is no logic to that. Okay, um, I don't know what to tell you. Clearly, me adjusting the brakes. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna move. So the thing is, if I'm gonna move this um, adjustable. Um, stem up to give me a little more height then I'm going to need to loosen and tighten this oh there's a thing here and then I also have to rotate these so the handle bar so if I wanted to if it was sunny out and I wanted to get a ride out I would just to break uh, adjust the tires right now uh, check the um, check where the battery level is and then be done with it you know the cool thing about this is if I wanted to and you just you wanted to save some weight and you didn't do it you just slide those things off and then you put them back on just by twisting. Again, what, how much is this gonna protect? I, I seriously doubt a whole lot, but you know, it's better than nothing. Is it better than nothing? Uh, nice and covered. You know what, maybe I shouldn't have given them such a hard time. All right, I'm gonna tighten, look at this. Okay, I'm gonna, I don't know, does that need to be tightened? That's good. Um, the battery, the only way you see the battery level on this at all is from the uh, uh, L liquid crystal LED LCD, the red and green lights. So whatever that happens to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and since I think I'm going to raise the handlebar up. Has, to, has another safety bolt you can't there you go which is right under here you have to loosen or you're not going to be able to do that if you uh, i'm not gonna again i'm not moving the camera at all to see what i'm doing but if you go and if you get this and you look you'll see the thing that needs to be loosened in order to um, really raise the um, handlebar pipe. Getting close. There that is. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to move that to right there. Again, one of the issues by raising this up, it shorts the distance from the seat post to here. So even though it's higher, it does kind of change your how much you're leaning over. Uh, and you want to mess around with this to figure out what works best. But it, it just seemed to me like I had to get this up higher for, because of how small this felt. Okay, so tighten that down. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to tighten this again. So you only have to tighten this side. Okay, so that's done. That moves. So then the last thing I have to do is if you look by me tilting this up this way, it forced the handlebars to rotate down so the brakes and everything and the, where everything is is in the wrong place. So I need to loosen, twist, turn down, and that should be enough. And I guess they give you the right tools because I know exactly what tools are like. I keep on going, oh, it's amazing that that's the right tool. Um, this has a little, I think it has a little rubber grommet that allows you to, um, that makes the process of doing this a little bit better. So again, so you can see what I'm doing. Because I rotated this up, it, it changed the angle of the bars. So then I am now moving this down like this. I think that is more than enough. Um, and I only have to do the adjustment if I ever need to fix that from now on. I just adjust this. I don't. I'm, I don't have to mess with this anymore unless I feel like it, the the uh, distance is way too short. Um, but that should take care of that. Okay. Um, I've been charging up my battery for the past half hour since I've been putting this together. Um, and like I said, I don't know if they meant for it to be partially inserted or not. Um, it was a little, it was a little odd the way that this was in here partially. So I don't know, I have no idea if that did any damage or not. So we will find out. The only thing that needs to happen right now is the, the um, brakes need to be adjusted. Right now, the, um, there's a little bit of chatter uh, in the gears that I'm changing, but not enough for me to, you know, it does not sound bad at all. Uh, so far, everything looks amazing. There are no free cables. I'm like, like often you'll get uh, cheap bikes and they don't have the end caps on here for, to free the cables. There's not a single thing on here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and take this off and I'm going to do. So there is not a single thing on here that is scratched. It is a nice, it really looks quite nice. The seat is gel. Fenders are, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm giving them such a hard time, but um, they are kind of crap. I love the way that that uh, red little sprocket uh, gear just makes it seem like it's a high-end piece. Again, this is plastic. There is your um, control module. What, there's another name for that. Lots of wires and cables in there. Um, I'm gonna check to see what happens when I take a picture of that. Tires, Canda Quest, amazing. Okay, so you see the close up of how it all looks so far. I'm impressed so far, but until you get it out on the road, check the range, see how it feels, and you really uh, can't have a final uh, um, review of this. So pretty, pretty good and not a whole lot of uh... It happens pretty quickly. Again, not as good as disc mechanical or hydraulic disc brakes. You do have to use some force in order to get close those. So um, this bike is about ready to go. Um, but um, overall, I'm, I'm very impressed with it. So what I'm going to do right now, um, uh, do some final adjustments. Um, I would really love to take this out and ride it right now because I'm, I'm impressed with what I see. I think for a I think the telltale thing is whether or not this thing can get you anything close to 18 miles on just throttle um, or 30 miles on uh, low power and pedal assist. So we'll see what's happening with that again. I, um, it's hard to say whether I want you to be impressed without actually getting it out there. But in terms of the quality of construction, I think it's pretty amazing. NACTO put their name on it, which I think is saying quite a bit. Um, uh, I don't think that they would want to put their name on a bike uh, if they knew that it was horrible. So there, there are no markings. There's no button that you can press to see what the power, uh, how much power is. Um, that's on and that's off. Um, I don't think it's a great idea to leave bikes out uh, for the possibility of getting wet. Like if you leave it on a bike rack and you know it's going to rain heavily. 
uh, you just don't know, you know, how waterproof or what the IPX rating is for that. Uh, but I will say anytime that you're going to put it in there, I would work hard to make sure that you have this rubber grommet over the charger. Um, again, if you want to lock this in the bike and then power it off, there's no way to press the power button up here to turn it on if you have it turned off. So I'm going to turn it on here, right there. Um, and the way that this goes in, the key is comes with two keys. The um, key is on this left side. You slide it into the um, bottom first, okay? And then I actually don't think you need the key to click this in. Let's see if I'm wrong. Nope, nope. So you have nothing on here. Um, a lot of the other batteries, uh, there is a way to check the power by pressing somewhere on the battery or on the holder to see if it's... All right, since I can't I get outside to take a bike ride, I do want, I'm gonna show you some close-ups of what I, Thinking just in terms of the quality of this bike. Um, not top quality, not high end, but there's some things I just want to point out. Um, I guess the first thing I want to say is if uh, you find V-brakes sometimes, they are just stamped metal versus uh, forged. And, uh, you know, these are not brand name brakes, but they are not stamped uh, weaker V-brakes. Uh, so I think that's a good sign. From what I can tell by the light, that's a not, uh, it, it works pretty well. As we come up to the uh, cockpit that they call this, these things, uh, yes, plastic brake uh, handles. It does have a cutoff switch for the brakes. So if you're pedaling and then you, it, as soon as you press either of the brakes, um, they will cut off any power. So I think one of the biggest wastes of battery is to be pressing brakes while pedaling and getting battery power. So you definitely, the cutoffs uh, certainly save some power. Um, this is the, um, let's go to here. The handlebars, are I mean, the uh, grips are amazing. Most of the time on a cheap bike, you're gonna, just gonna get flat things without this uh, really helpful part where you rest your palm and it just helps you change where your pressure points when you're cycling. So most cheap bikes don't even have this part. You just get the regular, um, you know, uh, um, grips that don't have this. The thing that makes it pretty amazing for such an inexpensive bike is it does have, uh, th there are lockdowns here that allow you to lock this down so this doesn't turn at all. So that, I mean, it, this would be on a thousand, two thousand dollar bike. I think that's rather amazing. Um, it does have just the one Mickey Mouse, they call the Shimano uh, thing, but it does work. Um, I've never had a problem with it. You're not doing mountain biking, so you're not doing anything that really requires that to do anything more than move your gears up and back. Um, but it'd be nice if this was had seven speeds, maybe, but is it that really that big a deal for an e-bike? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and power up this. Um, would it have been nice if this had a display that told you how fast you were going and stuff like that? Sure, wouldn't that be wonderful? Um, so it does show you that I have all power. As uh, So this is your battery level, and it's better than just having all, is the bar that goes across and diminishes. It kind of tells you if you're out of the green, then you need to be thinking about, you're about halfway. Um, this is the power level, so you've got these three up and down. I did power it on by pressing the center button right there. It's a little dark, so you can't see that. So if I turn it back on and press on this. Okay. Um, it looks like it always starts you in third, in the first level of power. There is a zero level power, which means um, that you're pedaling. I, I don't know why you would need to do this, but you can't turn the battery off, so that's the only way you're going to pedal without using any battery. So if you, maybe if you're running low and you're going downhill and you just wanna not have any possibility of drawing it, press down the bottom button and it gets you to zero power level. Um, so it goes to two, I mean two, one, two, and then that's high, you know, the, the most. So if you're using that and throttle, then you're not, then you're supposedly supposed to get 18 miles. Um, here is the horn. It's hard to figure out if, beeping a horn is annoying to people or, um, but I mean, sometimes you need to let them know. All right, so then here's the Mickey Mouse shifter. You do this to uh, push it into uh, lower gear, and then you press here to get to the higher gear, faster gear. Here is a throttle. Um, if, you, if, if I press that, actually, from what I can tell, it seems like it moves um, with some power. Again, this is only a 40 pound um, e-bike. Um, it feels like it has some power that it wants to go, um, 
One thing about uh, e-bikes with throttles, uh, uh, if you, when you have a throttle, you probably lose about 10 miles of um, range just because uh, pedal assist bikes require you to do some pedaling for the power to go, whereas with a throttle, you can just press on that throttle and ride it just like a scooter or motorcycle. And so you are draining power because you're not using any of your uh, leg power to do that. Um, again, Kenda uh, Quest tires, there's nothing great about them, but the fact that they it's not a uh, um, off-brand, I think it's amazing. Um, the crank arms, again, I think that they're 160. I can measure those in a bit. There's nothing special about them. Um, uh, I think that the pedals are kind of cool. Beefy kickstand. Um, I'm probably going to regret making fun of those fenders because I probably will do everything that you need them to do. So uh, seat, cushy. Um, it says gel, so I'm going to take their word for it. Um, so that's uh, really it. That's about all I can probably do right now before I um, get it on the road. I don't think there's any more information I can give you along those lines. So um, see you outside.